the previous video, our vampire era goes to the morgue to gather ingredients for a patient. Then he heads to Dr. Swansea's office. This is where Johnson's night begins. Alright guys, so we just got done crafting the medical ingredients from the old morgue. We gave that to, we want to go talk to Nurse Dorothy Crane, talk to the patient, and we're going to meet Dr. Edgar Swansea in his office. Please, Jonathan, come in. He looks really messed up. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body. Biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> the, you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. This is no gift. I'm a dead man. I was murdered. Now I'm a murderer. Tell me how this is a gift. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. No need to apologize. We need each other. No need to apologize. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. You got it. Can I talk to you more? Do you need something, Jonathan? I have just a few questions. Then ask away. I'm at your service, Doctor. Sorry guys, about me, I just like to ask a whole bunch of questions, so bear with me. You mentioned something about a secret society. A brotherhood, if I recall. Could you elaborate? Certainly. I've been a member of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stoll for several years. We are pledged to monitor and report vampire activity in England as impartial scientific observers. That explains your nightly wanderings about the docks and the questions you ask. I feel it wasn't mere coincidence that led us to that part of town. There was something as yet unseen that set those chain of events in motion. Yet you don't fear me. And still, you know the monster that lurks beneath the civilized surface. The Brotherhood has studied your kind for centuries. We believe you are as supernatural as a lion is to a gazelle. Since I'm the one working for you, what should I know about Pembroke Hospital? Well, for many years, we have been the only medical facility in this part of town that people can rely on. 
We support the community here, as well as provide health care. Where do we stand today? Well, to be honest, we cope on a day-to-day -day basis. The first wave of the Spanish flu last summer took us by surprise. We lack many of the basic necessities needed. What do you expect of me? What we need is hope. You were a soldier. This is a war. This white coat's still a uniform. We fight to help the poor, the sick of the East End, the forgotten. Okay, okay. The man we pursued and slew in the canning factory, William Bishop, I believe, was he a vampire? He was a skull, technically speaking. The debate rages as to their classification. Some think them a subspecies of vampire, others something else. Where do... how do skulls come into existence? The name means slave. The etymology may indicate that they are a lesser species of vampire. From what I know, vampires tend to despise them. Just for clarity, what differences are there between myself and a... a skull? A skull is easier to eliminate, Jonathan. Even if they remain formidable foes for the unprepared. Vampires... Now, vampires exist beyond the mortal realm. Makes sense. Since you seem quite the expert on vampires, what could you tell me about my condition and how it came about? As men of science, our first step is always to start with what we know. Forget the myths, the hackneyed scrawlings and the penny dreadfuls. They do not scratch the surface of the truth you now find yourself in. The sun. The morning following my... transformation. Its rays burned me. There was pain, smoke, uh, and my skin blackened. You will find there is very little that can kill a vampire, my friend. You have been offered relative immortality. The sun will most certainly hurt you, leaving you weakened and damaged. But it will not destroy you. Must I take a life to live? You are a vampire. You feed. And blood is the sole sustenance that can sustain your immortal frame. And only a living creature contains the nourishment you require. We'll see each other again soon, Edgar. Sorry guys, you guys have to go through all that chatting. I thought that was something. I just like to talk, talk, talk. But I know you guys want some action. So we're gonna get into it. Somewhere. Alright, I'm gonna go run out of here, see what's up. Alright, look like you're over there. Oh, you're actually there. The flu took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <coughs> Mr. Rainfield, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <coughs> now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind, the blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. That vampire girl. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. So it seems our Dr. Swansea does indeed have a fascination for creatures of our constitution. Dr. Swansea is a remarkable man. Dedicated, one might say, obstinate? He spent years compiling our bestiary. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. 
You must have countless questions. But our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Have any of the patients given you trouble? These poor souls have so little left to live for. I do my best to ease their pain. The world would be a better place if it were cared for by women like you. You make me blush. I am simply a necessary evil. Pardon my boldness, your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first... Prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. Okay. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. If we're dealing with an ordinary criminal, surely you've the means to deal with it yourself, if I may. As immortal tradition doth dictate, all fangs and hypnotic eyes ablaze, the blood would run like a river. That's what I hope to avoid. Violence has a tendency to spiral out of control. Who would be so foolish as to threaten you? A kindred spirit. Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. What are your expectations? Please be precise. As the newly appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your... condition. Alright, let's go talk to this... Harriet in the hospital. Is that her? Trying that room. I'm trying to figure out who's in this room. Oh, yeah. Simpletons, these nurses. Bred with no respect. What? What? What is this? Who are you? Get out of my room. There's no need for alarm, madam. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Preposterous. Dr. Reed, you say? I don't want some bumbling intern. Where's Dr. Swansea? Please, calm down, madam. I assure you that I am highly qualified. I'm just back from war duty. <laughs> how brave. Threatening an old defenseless woman. You know how long I've been a patient here. You've picked the wrong fight. I'm Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones? Indeed. I've been meaning to have a chat with you. 
You know what goes on here better than any other patient, I gather. Oh, better than any patient, nurse or doctor. I've seen so many vile undertakings. I heard there have been some despicable goings on. Was there a case of blackmail? Blackmail? I... Wait. You're investigating something. This isn't a social call. One of those incompetent cunts lit a poor sod's vein. If I didn't know better, Miss Jones, I'd be inclined to say you enjoy this type of idle gossip. God's honest truth, Doctor. It's just the way it is here. Most of these bitches would let you freeze to death before getting you a blanket. You seem to know more about the goings-on here than anyone else. Beware, Miss Jones, in case suspicion should fall on you. That's it. Blame the old and infirm. I see those little bitches, greedy little eyes. Just waiting for me to pop off, they are. I assure you, madam, this is not an investigation into a possible medical error. Debauchery, then? Nurses Crane, Hawkins, Brannigan's, whores, all of them. They can't keep their legs shut. I've seen them scratching slutty sores. Really? Well, if you have irrefutable proof, I'll not have the staff behaving in such a manner here. This is your business, Doctor, not mine. But I swear one of the nurses is cavorting with some man on hospital hours. Thank you for your time, Miss Jones. You've given me something to go on. See you on the next round. The patients and staff might know something. I'll start my investigation with them. All right, let's go find Nurse Hawk. There you are. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about the strange man visiting one of the nurses during her shift? Let me guess. You spoke with that old shrew, Harriet Jones. Do not pay attention to her, Doctor. She's full of fanciful tales. No matter how you feel about her, Miss Jones deserves our help. Who says I don't care for her? Hate is what keeps that old crone alive. Okay, you got beef with her, son. She could have been telling the truth about the mysterious man. That old witch will end up in hell soon enough. Who cares if a nurse finds some happiness where she can? She's hiding something. What can you tell me? Let me... Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Yep, she's definitely hiding something. Let's see. Nurse Dorothy. How long is it going to take to fix me properly? A month? A year? You have the right to disapprove of that. Wait, that's not it. Where are you guys? I'm trying to find them, guys. There's Hawkins. There's Thelma. Here, all right, you're out here. I'll go talk to you first. This is no time for self pity. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Have you seen a strange man? visiting any of the nurses here. I've never heard of such a thing, Doctor. Okay. I'm just checking if I miss anything. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. All right, so is Crane. Where is Crane at? Are you up there? Dorothy Crane. Says she's down here. Is she really down here? Who the heck are you? I feel you sense it. What the heck? 
sight. You're sure you don't come back with me? Nah, I ought to see someone at the hospital. Be careful. You look so bad they may keep you as a patient. Fuck them. I don't like hospitals. Or doctors. Well then, when you go back to Whitechapel, you may find this useful. What is it? A pass for a free medical exam by the best nurse available. Just read it. I don't read well, but thank you, I guess. She's up to something. Isn't the nurse there? Wow. I guess we're on our way to the sewers, guys. I'm... I'm liking it. Just wanna put the best video out there for you guys. Guys, no I'm gonna have to do some killing in here. There's blood spill. This man has been savagely attacked and dragged to the floor. Ooh, must be a skull. Rogue skull. I can be quiet. <laughs> Thought you could take on Dan Sayuka. I didn't even see him. Sorry guys. I just like to explore a little bit, but like the blood trail leads over here. Oh, he hurt. I'm going the right way, guys. <laughs> I just like to do that for you guys. I don't know why. <laughs> this is a force of habit, okay? I'm sorry if it's disgusting, guys. Sewer beast. Oh, snap! Who the heck are what you? What sort of creature is this? Alright, he got two power hits. Come on. I'm not gay.
come on, come on, come on, come on. This dude looks like a werewolf though, for real. This is why I told you guys not to go to the tours, man. Oh, snap. a lot to check, but I should anyway. Oh. You guys can pause that and read that. I'm just going to quickly scan, uh, scan through this. Skim, uh, skim through this. Sorry. Some voucher for a free checkup in Whitechapel. What is Nurse Crane up to? I really must find her. Yeah, what is Nurse Crane up to? man. Can I talk to you? You're safe, dude. Are you injured, sir? Help me get out of here. I need to get out. I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd be glad to help you, but you must calm down first. Please, take a deep breath and tell me your name. Okay. Okay, I I I'm Oswald Thatcher. Please, I need to get out. All right, Mr. Thatcher, you're safe now. Do you think you can reach the street by yourself? Yes. Yes, I do. Good. Now leave this place and enjoy the cool night air. It's quite invigorating. I'm sure you'll feel better if you do. All right. Saved his butt. But we are going to stop there, guys. See you guys next time. So Jonathan gets the bottle from the thug in the sewers and heads to the White Chapel. What will Jonathan encounter next? Who will he meet? To be continued.